Good evening, and welcome to episode number 18 of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. Josh, it's nice to be back in the Slash Tracks News studio, live via uh, Master Evil's prison cells that he provided for us. Uh, we're both here live, live via satellite from our cells to bring to the Slashaholics episode number 18 of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm back. You're back. Feels good to be back. My hair's uh, back. The crystal pets is back. We need back. Your hair never went anywhere, first of all. Um, no, it's on my back now. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, I had a friend growing up whose neck hair grew so heavily underneath his ear and around his neck that when he grew sideburns, it wrapped around his ear and attached to his neck hair, and it looked like he had a hair football helmet. <laughs> Like, like, you know how there's, like, an ear hole? Yeah. Like, his ear was surrounded by hair. Because it, oh. like, attached from the neck back area around the sideburn and beard hair area. <laughs> He's watching right now going, you motherfucker. Good, I hope he is watching. He can leave mean comment of the week. He can talk shit down in the comments right below. And if you're in our comments below, uh, Josh has attached our new business email, which is slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com, and in case any of you uh, want to send us some email, comments, uh, you know, feedback about the show, if you're interested in partnering with the show, maybe you want to, maybe you want to sponsor us, uh, maybe you have some sort of idea you'd like to work with us in the future, go ahead and write us an email at slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com. You can also write in to the show with that email, uh, slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com and ask questions to Josh or I. Maybe ask questions for the show. Maybe uh, give us ideas or topics. And if we think they're funny, if we think they're interesting, maybe they'll show up in a future episode. But if you're demanding that I narrate certain books and it's like the 12th time you've asked me to, and I've already told you it's on the list, just don't just save it. <laughs> you know, I got it. I got it. The reins. Uh, I got it. <laughs> are you referring to the guy, Josh, who is a troll without knowing that he's a troll? And he also is the most pushy fan that we've ever had on the channel. Um, and I don't know if he knows that he's doing it. It almost feels like hes it's a wink deal. Like, he knows yeah. what he's doing, but it's coming across so vaguely that I don't know if he's being a dick or not. So I can't really <laughs> say anything to him. He's getting back. that close to being blocked. I've told mm -hmm. him. He'll comment on videos that have nothing to do with narrations. That's, yes, that's Never the Never the reins. The reins. Let me know when you're going to do it. Your son can voice a character. You know, be sure to let me know. Hope that, to hear see, it soon. That's got bizarre. Read it. <laughs> that's bizarre. There's two, there's two things that, that, well, there's more than two things. The one thing that really bothers me is, first of all, your son is a kid, and he's going to be a kid. He's going to school. Uh, he's got a starring role as the rodeo clown on Slash Tracks, uh, a highly successful, just huge show on the channel. Freeze By the way, yeah, Scream 3 right now is on pace for 30,000 views in five days. Rodeo clown is a huge part of that. So that he's busy, okay, first of all. <laughs> Number two, Josh and I have day jobs. We have lives. Josh has a wife. I have a girlfriend. Um, Josh has kids. We're busy. We have stuff going on. Uh, we appreciate you, uh, you know, giving us feedback and stuff. But when you tell us to do something, that's going to make us not want to do it. So that's number two. And number three, just telling us how to do it. Like, we do this because it's fun, right? I, I, we do it because it's fun, not because, you know, Joe Blow or whatever said, hey, this is how you're going to do it. This is how I want you to do it. And Josh kind of broached the topic about this guy. Go ahead and read the book. But it's like, dude, he wants us. He wants Josh to narrate the book so bad for the channel. Uh, he's obviously a fan of said book. So he's already probably read the book. So why does he want the damn book narrated so bad if he's already read it? Maybe it's like I'm an ASMR for him or something. You know, I don't know. But here's the deal. I put it on my list. It's there. But if the comment pops up again, it may disappear from the list. I heard you. It's on there. I don't know when I'll get to it. I don't put books out as often anymore because there's like 65 available on the channel. I'm pacing the narrations. I'm doing Ash vs. Freddy right now, a fan book, which is a lot of fun. Check that one out. I've got the, first, I've got the prologue and the first two chapters available. 
Uh, it's already hit almost 800 views in a couple days, so it's doing good. Uh, check that out. Check out all the other books I got. Your books that you asked for are on the list. That's the best I can do right now. I cannot give you a date. Um, <clears throat> but please, uh, I don't want to comment, but ordering me around and like being pushy isn't the way to do it. Um, just enjoy the channel. Have fun. <clears throat> so, uh, so that being said, uh, let's get into just a little bit of uh, channel news real quick. So Josh has got the Freddy vs. Ash uh, thing going for the narrations, which, by the way, the views are way up for his narrations. And for the, all the people that tell him or tell us not to do slash tracks, just stick to narrations, don't do the, the podcast – when when Josh and I started the podcast and the Slash Tracks movie riff, you know, show, and we're going to do a review show, I know we keep talking about it, and we've got a bunch of other things planned. We do interview shows. The interview with Andre Gower from Monster Squad has almost 30,000 views, or excuse me, almost 24,000 views in like 12 days. Uh, we've got a lot of irons in the fire, but all those things are bringing other eyeballs to the narrations. So yeah. it's helping the narrations. So... You know, he didn't stop doing them, but he's got tons and tons of them. Just, you know, hold tight. There's a lot of stuff coming up. He, we didn't forget uh, our roots. And, uh, you know, that being said, Josh, let's get into nice comment, mean comment to start the show off. Yeah, that's why we're called the Slash Tracks Network. Lots of cool stuff on here. And uh, these, these comments can come from any video on the network. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, where, where did our first good comment come from? All right, nice comment uh, for the nice comment, mean comment sandwich. All right, so this is from uh, the Season 3, Scream 3, uh, Slash Track Season Premiere. This was funny. Probably the best MST3K clone on YouTube. And it's from Zahara Sahin. And, uh, yeah, that's a really nice compliment. That's very... Because uh, there are a lot of uh, clones of MST3K out there, and for him to think that we're the best... Not not bad. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's big time. I haven't, I haven't seen a lot of them that do like the wraparounds and everything. They usually just like play a movie or clips of a movie. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, we we love doing it. We put a lot of it's it's tongue in cheek. It's corny. It's supposed to be. And we're glad you appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. We're a clone. Yeah. So. Somebody somebody <laughs> said uh, this wasn't one of the comments I wrote down, but somebody said you guys must have so much fun uh, filming these episodes. And then I wrote back. I was like, oh, absolutely. Um, and you know we're having a good time because we're not doing it for the money because yeah. <laughs> there is no money. So no, no dinero. Yeah, so we do it because we like to do it. We do it because we like to uh, help people have some, uh, you know, entertainment in their, in their work day, in their lives, everything. The world is a, is a tough place these days. Uh, gas prices, grocery prices, all this crap. So if we can help your day go just a little bit better and entertain you and take your mind away from all the doldrums and all the all the stuff that's going on, that's awesome. And that's that's an honor that we can do that. Yeah, thank you so much. And if uh, anybody listening, speaking of no money, if you would like to support the network, the channel here, uh, go to the Patreon. The link's right there <clears throat> in the description, and it should be on the screen. Um, that's the only way, that's the best way to support the channel. Uh, monetizing the channel is, like, really hard to do because we have a lot of copyright stuff with the riffing and with the narrations. And also... Once you monetize a channel, YouTube is like really hard and will give you strikes for just some of the stuff we talk about here on the podcast would probably get mm -hmm. us deplatformed, uh, you know, demonetized. So if you want to support the channel, that is literally the best way to do it uh, right there on the screen and in the description, Patreon. Uh, you can do it for as low as a dollar a month, and we'd really appreciate that. Yeah, and if you do do the Patreon, Josh and I weren't joking, there is going to be exclusive content. We are going to do an exclusive wrestling show at least once a month for the all Patreon members. I know we were asked in the comments, like, is it going to be available for people that can't afford it? Um, probably not to begin with, probably for a while, because that's kind of the carrot we're dangling for people to, you know, be incentivized to, you know, start out with Patreon. And if you can get the extra show for a dollar a month, it would absolutely be worth it, so... Uh, it's going to be some really good content. Um, mean comment, Josh. Let's go to mean comment. <laughs> oh, God. Um, and this is kind of what we were talking about earlier. No, nope, nah, nah, just stop. Bad is the podcast. Just narrate. And this is from uh, Bahadur. 
And that's on the Scream 3 slash track season premiere. And he's telling Josh to cut out everything, just narrate, and be his little bitch boy and read the books uh, like a good uh, narrator should. Like Daryl on Walking Dead. I ain't nobody's bitch. Uh, (laughs) You know what? I have more fun, honestly, uh, being, you know, being able to be more creative. Uh, I have a ton of fun narrating, especially playing Freddy and Chucky and Ash and all that. It's a lot of fun. But getting to do the podcast and the riff show with Alex and, you know, even the Out of Print Slasher show, all that stuff, getting to actually branch out and do original content is a lot of fun for me. And it's what I love to do. It's what me and Alex love to do. We're not going to stop, but if you want to keep leaving a mean comment on everything we do, hey, it helps the algorithm, so keep mm-hmm. on watching. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Leave as many mean comments as you want. I actually like when people leave mean comments because it helps me uh, write, you know, fill out the show format for the next week because uh, we don't get a lot of mean comments anymore. We used to get a lot. Like when, we first, like when the channel first started to really start kind of blowing up a little bit and bubbling uh, about six or seven months ago, um, I was kind of, I was, I was a little more sensitive in those days because I wasn't used to it. I wasn't, not only was I not used to it, but I didn't even know how to deal with it because it's so weird to have the internet's like someone's yelling in your kitchen window and, uh, you know, I can either choose to close it or leave it open. So I didn't know what to do. Cause it's like, wow, people are watching the show, but they fucking hate it. So how do I do, how do I deal with that? Um, and for years, not years, but from the time I started narrating, I had some trolls and people that would say mean things. Uh, just the other day, somebody commented on the Halloween narration of the original uh, novelization. Yeah. Um, and I don't even know who they thought they were gonna get a response from because there's like 300 comments on that narrate on that book, and they're all positive. But he's all like, "This dude sounds like somebody from Bob's Burgers or something when he does the girl voice." Oh, the music's too loud. Uh, oh, so he's George W. Bush as the judge. And I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry that my music's too loud and my voices are bad. But hey, here's a link. Uh, I actually found this book for you, a used copy. Uh, it's only $299 um, on Amazon. It's, it's a great deal, actually, because this book's usually th- uh, 800 or 1000 yeah. And you won't have to listen to my annoying Bob's Burgers voice or whatever. And uh, he abruptly deleted his comments. Uh, So I think he he didn't realize that I actually read the comments and I'm the narrator and do all that. Uh, It spooked him, apparently. But, uh, yeah. His name was, uh, uh, let's see here, um, Mop John or something, Wop John or something. It was like W-O-P John. Uh, So, yeah, that that was a mean comment I wanted to throw out. I don't think anybody was going to back you up on that, buddy. Over 300 comments, all positive. Uh, People actually appreciate what I do. Mop John. You know what he can do with that comment? He can just go straight to the nearest John and start mopping that bitch. All right? Take your foul comments and your bullshit and take it to the toilet and flush it. Learn some some class. Yeah, dude. If somebody's like, if Josh (laughs) is trying to uh, help you have access to something that costs hundreds of dollars, especially in an economy, uh, that we're in right now, and you're going to spit in his face, you can fuck right off. Um, let's go into nice comment. Sweet. Uh, and this will end the segment right here. And this is a really nice one. So this is referring to getting sidetracked number four, our latest interview uh, episode with Andre Gower, the star of Monster Squad. Which, okay. by the way, uh, we dropped two weeks ago. It's uh, over 23,000 views and climbing. So... This, and this interview is over two hours long, by the way, so it's a longer one. It said, so the guy says, I could have kept listening. Was very fun and very informative. And the name's Simi. So he said he, kept, he could have kept listening, and the interview was over two hours long. So that's really high praise. Yeah, thank you. Uh, he might have been one of the ones that uh, went and watched the Adam Marcus one after because its numbers jumped up like a thousand or mm-hmm. it's it like two two thousand. It went up from two okay. five. Yeah, it's like four or five now. So the Adam Marcus interview, the director, writer, uh, you know, creator of J- Jason Goes to Hell, that interview went from twenty five hundred views 
to over 4,500 views just from Andre's interview being popular on the show. So, and a little chance. announcement: we it's most likely uh, whenever his documentary "Parts of Darkness" drops, it's a documentary on the making of Jason Goes to Hell. He's probably going to come back and have another discussion with us on getting sidetracked. Oh, uh, yeah. So we'll have a follow up to that interview. That one was like, yeah, like you said, like three hours long. Yeah, uh, but you you, can't, you don't realize it because it's just it flows so good. Um, it's it's crazy how you can have uh, like an like an open discussion with somebody, and from the from the moment you turn the camera on, um, you can feel a difference in how comfortable you are with the guest. Um, yeah as opposed to not being comfortable with a guest and it makes the interview that much more fun and more watchable. So the Adam Marcus one, the Andre Gower one, uh, Ryan Thomas, Ryan Johnson from Carnosaur two. Uh, those interviews are great. Um, you know Ira. what else? Ira, Ira was pretty good. Um, yeah. and I'm really happy he did the interview with us. Uh, I would just would have, felt a little bit better about it if I didn't feel like I was talking to my doctor about a growth I had. Uh, <laughs> like, I felt like when I was a little kid and I had that, you know, paper dress on and my ass was hanging out and I'm sitting on the butcher paper in the doctor's office. I just kind of felt uncomfortable almost the entire time, but, you know, whatever. Got um, a lot of information. He, he's a cool guy. You know? He's a cool guy. Um, he's, a, he's a great guy. Um, that being said, you know what else is great? Fun facts. Let's get into Fun them. Facts. Let's do it. All right, Josh, we might, we might be on to something with this one, and I can see a trend or some merch uh, happening from this one. Cannabis plants can help absorb nuclear radiation, which, you know, so <laughs> I've heard of people getting high. I've heard the strains of marijuana uh, becoming stronger and stronger than our parents' weed was in the 60s and 70s. We've all had pot brownies maybe once or twice, maybe a pot cookie. But have you ever in your life had nuclear weed? Nuclear grizzlies graze on that stuff, man. <laughs> they, oh, they they, the power. Wait a minute. They graze on it or do they smoke it? Uh, it depends on if they're hanging out with coke bees or not. You know, If they're hanging coke out with coke bees, they're all just smoking it, lacing it with the coke. Coke uh, bears. Uh, uh, coked out bears um, versus nuclear. No, coked out bears on nuclear weed versus nuclear grizzlies. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a Texas three way uh, <laughs> handicap match. Um, Josh, did you know that sloths don't fart? Oh wow! Yeah, they Wait, get a bad I, rap. I watched the Goonies. I'm pretty sure he did once. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys! Baby okay. Ruth! Um, that guy who played Sloth in the Goonies, um, I'm going to butcher his name. He was Mongo in Blazing Saddles, and he was also... John Methuselah or something, I think that was his name. He played in the NFL. Um, he's passed away, so God rest his soul, but he had an, a brief but very important career in Hollywood. He was in two major classics. He was in The Goonies and Blazing Saddles. So, oh, yeah. yeah, a huge part of our childhood. Uh, and most people don't even know who he was or that he was in the NFL or whatever. Um, Josh, you've been bad. <laughs> no, Alex has been bad, folks. I gave him one of these, which are like gold to me. Mm -hmm. And he was supposed to open it up today on the show, but he's not going to do it until the next one. Well, I'm I'm holding it for my wedding day or for like when uh you know, if I ever have a child, like I'll be I'll have a big cigar going, maybe some nuclear weed, I'll be rolling some nuclear weed or something and I'll break out that crystal Pepsi. Well, that way it'll go it'll go flatten after a while. So, how about for episode 20, you you crack it open for episode 20. That's okay. the milestone. So, episode 20, the next one's 19, this is 18. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, all right, all right. And then hopefully we'll be celebrating a new sponsor by episode 20. That'd be nice. And Wouldn't maybe, uh, yeah, and if we, uh, he's also got a flaming Hot Mountain Dew, you know. Uh, and, a frost, and a Frost, and a Frost, and a Frost Mountain Dew, and a Duff Energy Drink. Yes, I thought you'd yeah, like that. I do, if I we, do like that one. If we can get, if we can break 50K on this episode, the next time we break 50K on an episode... We will drink a flaming hot Mountain Dew on camera. Okay, so there we go. We'll all chug right. it. Um, God. <laughs> um, 
All right, Josh. An overly active sex drive can be a symptom of rabies. I can see that. Um, I can see that. Just animal instincts and that. Uh, it's like, hey, we're here, Josh, you're here for your checkup. You know, you're approaching 40. Just sat down on this butcher paper. I'm Dr. Ira Hyden. Uh, Want to talk to you real quick. Uh, checking out. You know, it seems like you and your wife, Beth, have been getting frisky a little more. I think that's great. Get the blood you flowing. The yeah, that's fantastic. Why don't you sit down, have a Duff energy drink while I look at the paperwork. Uh, all these things are good. Blood flow, health, whatever, good sex life, good marriage, happy wife, happy life. Big problem here, Josh. I think you may have rabies. <laughs> well, of course I do. <laughs> Your I penis? Was bit, I was bit by a nuclear weed uh, rabies zombie. And, Your penis uh, is rabid. <laughs> <laughs> Your penis is foam. That's not semen coming out of your penis. Uh, that is uh, foam. You have rabies. Instead of old yellow, it's like old tallywhacker or something. <laughs> by the way... Gotta uh, put it down. <laughs> by the way, Slashaholics, the reason we're not partners with YouTube is because of this segment right here. This we would probably... Case, they would shut us... They would They would give yeah. us a strike right here for we adult a strike right now. Um, Josh, if you did have rabies uh, and you did have a foaming penis... <laughs> Holding money in your hand can reduce stress levels as well as minimize pain. So just holding money can have those healing uh, factors wow. and benefits. Yeah. I, I'd like to have a chance to hold money someday. I don't, I've heard about it. Yeah. I've, I've heard stories. I've seen people do it. I've never actually had a chance to do it. But I'd like to know what that feels like someday. I always as a kid, I wanted to swim through like a vault full of gold coins like uh, Scrooge. You know, Scrooge, but then I watched Family Guy and realized that's probably what would happen. <laughs> you just break it's your neck. Not, it's not a liquid. It's a bunch of solids. <laughs> Scrooge wore his top hat. He had cane. He had a monocle. He had the top. He had the coat. No pants on. He's diving. No, w my joke's ruined because when he dove into the money bin, he wore a wetsuit, like a bathing suit. But here's another question. He's aware of what a bottom part of your clothing is, right? So why isn't he wearing pants most of the time when he's going around Duckburg? Because all businesses ever uh, order is no shoes, no shirt, no service. There's nothing on the sign about pants. Yeah. So he's like, fuck it. He's Nobody got, cares. <laughs> he's, got, uh, he's got fuck you money. Um, at that point, he's so rich that he knows it's illegal not to wear pants in Duckburg, but he doesn't care. He just shows up to the establishments and basically says, I'm here with Huey, Dewey, and Louie. None of us have pants on, and we are going to get our you know, ice cream or whatever the hell we're going to get, and you're not going to say a word because I'm a fucking billionaire. And I also have a pilot of a helicopter that cannot fucking fly, and he crashes every... He's got so much money he can afford to keep... Launchpad McQuack on the payroll. He crashes his helicopter every episode. Speaking of ice cream and Huey Dewey and Louie, if anybody watching this episode remembers, if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, if you remember the Huey Dewey and Louie ice cream bar, it was pretty big. It had all three of them on it. Uh, I think it was made by the company that made the Great White Shark ice cream bars. I can picture it in my head right now. Yeah, it had Huey Dewey and Louie on it. It was pretty big. Let me know if you ever had one, folks. You're like, and then that same vein, if you guys have ever had any, if you still happen to have some, please send them to slash tracks oh, no. uh, 2020 at gmail.com. If I could have an ice cream from back then, it would be either a WWE or ice WWE cream bar. Ice bar. Because they have like uh, ice cream sandwiches now made the same way those were, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they just don't taste the same. Um and but if I could have anything from back then, it would be the Mickey's Parade ice cream bar, where it's like a white face with white, like just vanilla ice cream, with like a chocolate ice cream eye and smile, okay. chocolate ice cream ears, but the ears were covered in like a chocolate shell, just the ears. Damn. It was Mickey Mouse. He had uh, an ice cream sandwich with Mickey on it that was really good. Like a, it was like a big Oreo but ice cream. Okay. And they had the Mickey's Parade popsicles. That were shaped like Goofy, Mickey, uh, Donald, and I think... 
I remember those else. specifically. Yes. yes, they had those, and they had a version that had uh, ice cream in the middle, like vanilla ice cream in the middle. So they had the regular popsicles. Those, I just, I wish we still had that stuff. Um, uh, hey, <clears throat> by the way, so I was going to save this for later, but let's just talk about it right now. There's two, since we're talking about things we wish we had back, McDonald's has done two things. The first thing they did is it's not officially uh, a thing in America yet, but it was just announced on the McDonald's official Twitter account. They're bringing back the Boo Buckets from the 1980s. Yeah. So the Boo Buckets, when Josh and I were kids growing up in the 80s, you could go to the McDonald's and get a Happy Meal, and you could either have a witch, a ghost, or a pumpkin. And they weren't very big, but they were just such a great design. Uh, they were really portable. Uh, I used it to trick or treat probably the first like like when I was like three, four, or five, yeah. and when I got older and Halloween Pillows. got very serious, I started using a pillowcase. But before that, I used the boo buckets. So the boo buckets are coming back to Canada, but they're also heavily rumored to be coming back like the third week uh, or sometime like towards the end of the second week in October. So. They're probably going to be available. And Josh, you had some knowledge you wanted to drop on uh, the Slashaholics about McDonald's also. Yes, uh, but I want to finish up what you were saying, just so people are clear. There have been, like, buckets since then, like, in the past, like, 10 years or so. But they've always been, like, Scooby-Doo or something like this. Yeah. What he's talking about is <clears throat> G, you know, which, uh, and all that, pumpkin, the actual buckets from back then. It's not like... Scooby Doo buckets or no Shrek buckets. It's the perhaps. ghost, the ghost, the pumpkin, and the witch. Yeah, um, but yeah, at McDonald's uh, you can also get an adult Happy Meal, Alex. Yeah, uh, that comes with uh, very excited like figures and toys that are supposed to be geared towards uh, stuff like whenever we were kids, like Grimace, like uh, Ronald pals. I'm hoping eventually. Uh, we can get, like, the little Transformer ones again, like the burger and stuff that transforms. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the Fry Kids Halloween toys you could get yeah, where the they had the costumes? The Fry Guys. I had, um, I remember the Fry Guys who had costumes, but do you remember the McNuggets that had costumes? And, like, each McNugget, like, one of them was, like, a scuba, scuba diver. That's what I meant, them, yeah. Yeah. yeah the, one of them was, like, a scuba diver. One of them was, like, a rock climber. Dracula. Oh, yeah, those McNugget toys, to me except for the Tiny Toons ones that turned into superheroes, were the peak of the McDonald's toys to me. Those McNugget ones with outfits were just <laughs> chef's kiss. They were phenomenal. So whoever the hell did that one, way to go. Wobble Wobble, in the words of Birdie or, or Grimace or whoever this is. Wobble <laughs> Wobble, Who, which one said that? Was that Birdie or was that? No, Hamburglar. It was Hamburglar. the Hamburglar. Yep. For the I win. feel like I feel like adult Happy Meal is going to end up in the title somewhere uh, well, of the episode. But <laughs> why don't they put? In it, okay, if this truly is an adult Happy Meal, how come they're not putting just a little baggie of nuclear weed in there for the kids? That's your to that's your prize. It comes oh, with a happy ending. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, no, they're like you get a little dime bag of nuclear <laughs> nuclear grizzly weed. You get a, you get a toy from the eighties. You might get a boo bucket. And it's, it's an eight chewy or something, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's all a little half a tab of Vicodin, some you know, eighteen ninety nine uh, adult Happy Meal. <laughs> I'm going to make an admission on camera here. <laughs> I tried one of those like uh, pretty weak, like stuff they can actually sell at like a smoke shop. It's like little uh, gummies. It's like yeah. Delta Eight, whatever. It's not like hardcore weed gummies. It's just like, anyways. I tried one and I haven't smoked weed or anything since I was really young and uh, Beth was like well is it, you feel relaxed or anything I was like no, I don't think I feel anything yeah. <laughs> she's like what me meanwhile you're flying through the clouds like <laughs> on a doghouse you're the red baron from get, peanuts I just kept getting closer to the TV like I'm good <laughs> uh, when I was so I've been sober almost eight years now, but when I wasn't sober, um, every once in a while I would, uh, have a pot brownie or something. And, you know, you'd be, my problem was when I would drink, I'd want to do both. Yeah. So I can't do either now, but when I did used to partake in those, uh, things, I remember going to play Frisbee golf one day and we, I accident, I, I didn't accidentally, I did it. 
I had a pot brownie, and then I had another one, and I wasn't. I had them back to back, like. Super oh no. Quick. We went to play frisbee golf, and we played the first three holes, and then it started to kick in. Um, so we played eighteen holes, but after hole three, I thought we were just playing hole three over and over and over again. I, I asked my friend. I said, "Why are we playing hole three again?" And he's like, "Dude, we're like on hole fourteen right now. You are." out of your mind high right now. You are in the stratosphere right now. <laughs> I thought we played the same hole 18 times, dude. <laughs> and then we went to see the movie later that night when I'm still super high. We went to see Taken 2. Oh, um, really? <laughs> and not even being high could save that movie. That movie was like Liam Neeson. Like the guy, the guy, the bad guy was the guy whose son kidnapped Liam Neeson's daughter in the first movie, but Liam Neeson killed his son, so now the guy wants to kill Liam Neeson because he killed his son, who was a bad guy. So not even being high could save that movie's plot. It was... that. That's, by the way, that should be on Trash Tracks. We should definitely do Taken 2 at some point. There's, taken, there's also a Taken 3 in a TV series. God, uh, man. that. Man, so I, I've been sober for, you know, like, uh, since 2010. Uh, I, I broke my back back in the day and I had a pill problem. I've talked about this openly on the channel before and now i feel bad that i chewed that gummy i didn't realize it was like breaking that i just i just i have anxiety problems so i thought it would relax me i just wanted to see if because it's not like the stuff you you go and have to have a card for you just go yeah yeah if you and, uh, if you didn't knowingly like if you didn't know that it was in the same vein i wouldn't beat yourself up I didn't about think it, it was. I thought it was just bullshit because you could just go and get it at a smoke shop, you know, like yeah. a cigarette smoke shop. I was like, oh, this can't be anything. It, oh, uh, before we move on, I wanted to show this off to the channel. You can get this shirt at the Teespring store uh, right now. Uh, we're going to be adding a lot of new designs for Slash Tracks very soon. Uh, this is one of the original designs uh, for 80 Slasher Librarian. I was wearing it. Uh, you can get that at Teespring. There's a link in the description. Nice. And we want you to keep an eye out because we're going to be adding some designs, maybe even a nuclear grizzly design, right? Yeah, nuclear grizzlies, nuclear gummies, nuclear THC. <laughs> um, and then, hey, before we get into the last fun fact, I just want to say, don't beat yourself up too much. We all make bad, you know, bad choices and stuff. Uh, if you knew me <laughs> in the past, uh, I was the king of fucking up. So don't beat yourself up too much. It's, life is all about falling off the horse and getting right back on top of it. If you stay down, you're beat. Okay? So if you if you choose to stay down after I've got a no mess desire. up. I've got okay. no desire to try it again. It was just it's like this can't be any this can't be good. This if they just sell them to anybody, you know, it's like this can't yeah. be and it it just is mostly relaxing, but yeah, I felt like a like a teenager like afraid to say anything. You know, just uh, I'm going to say stupid. <laughs> Um, so I'm wearing a Muhammad Ali shirt right now. Okay. Here's okay. Muhammad Ali. All right. So the last fun fact is about Muhammad Ali. Okay. Muhammad Ali enjoyed performing magic tricks. However, his Muslim faith forbade him from deceiving others. So oh. he would actually have to explain the tricks after he performed them. Uh, that would take all the fun out of it, and I wonder if he also did that if he was trying to sleep with women on the road during his boxing matches. <laughs> He's like, like, after he tricked them into bed, you know, like, wind and dined them, got them into bed, uh, did he explain to them how he got them into bed and why it was wrong after he <laughs> climaxed? Is that how that works? He's like, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, but not. But I'm not really floating like a butterfly or stinging <laughs> like a bee because I'm a human and they're a bee and they're a butterfly. And it's you know, wrong. I shouldn't have done I'm it. Still, I want to have sex. I'm sorry. I'm still waiting to hear the explanation for the disappearing trick he did. What? What do you mean? He's like, d he did like a disappearing act and, and nobody's seen him for years, man. Oh, you stupid bastard. <laughs> He's passed away, and oh. he's a legend. Oh, okay. Fight no, I love... He is a legend. He was fucking amazing. Um, uh, I, think I, can, I think I can make you laugh and at least a couple uh, fans laugh real quick. It's, it's, it's a quick little joke. Uh, throw it into the show here. We haven't done a show in a while, and I'm having a blast. Um, so, Alex. 
Yeah. This, this magician, since you brought up magicians, was on a cruise ship, right? And he got a gig for three months on a cruise ship. God, three and, months on a cruise ship? Yeah. Jesus Christ. And uh, every night that he would do his act, there was this one fan in the crowd that had this parrot. And every time he would do a trick, the parrot would give away how the trick was done. You know, he'd pull a rabbit from the hat, you know, and he'd be like, eh, hidden pocket in the hat, eh. Just fuck up this guy. Every trick he did, this parrot would fuck it up and give away how he did it. Well, the cruise ended up sinking. The boat sank, people died. The only survivor was the magician. And he was floating on a piece of driftwood. And the parrot survived too and was sitting there with him. And he floated in the water for three days and the parrot never said a word. And finally, the parrot spoke and said, Eh, I give up. What'd you do with the boat? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Uh, let's get into sports. <laughs> let's let's he segue. The, he made the boat disappear. Yeah, the let's segue. Let's segue from that dad joke and let's slip right into sports. Josh, per the Fox broadcast of the Seahawks versus Lions game last Sunday, which I was, by the way, watching live because I'm in the region. I live in Oregon where the Seahawks are on every freaking weekend. It sucks. Uh, star wide receiver DK Metcalf was carted off the field to the locker room. So he was on the cart where people usually have spine injuries, <laughs> break their back, whatever. Uh, he was carted off to the locker room from the field uh, because of a bathroom break that he needed to have. So he needed to use the bathroom, so they, <laughs> they brought him to the bathroom on the cart. Was it that bad? Like, if I walk, it's going to be bad, guys. You need to just carry me. Oh, too late. Carry me. <laughs> Hurry, just carry me. I've had situations where... Uh, I have I call them buzzer beaters, where it's like you really have to go number two, and you're literally your pants are down around your ankles, and your ass cheeks just hit the bowl, and as your ass cheek hits the bowl, you start going to the bathroom. That's a, that's a game winner, dude. Michael Jordan never hit one that clutch. Like you, if you, it's a buzzer beater. Like you literally would have shit your pants if you got there a second later. It's like it's, for for Alex, it's like. What is it? Nicole, get the fuck out of the bathroom. Get the fuck out of the bathroom. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, man. I've had situations where it's like... I love you, but get the fuck out of the bathroom. Yeah, you just know you're going to be in some serious trouble uh, if you don't get to the bathroom soon. Um, I just think that's hilarious that he was carted back on the freaking uh, spinal trauma cart. Like, the back break. You broke your back cart to take a dump. All right. Um, a pair of tickets that were once used by fans to go see Michael Jordan's NBA debut, so his first game ever, have just hit the auction block. They're so rare that experts are predicting that they could sell for up to three hundred thousand dollars a piece. Or I think to, I think together. Um, it didn't it didn't specify if it was at, they come as a pair or if it's uh, single, but three hundred thousand dollars for some ticket stubs. Uh, holy shit. I used to save ticket stubs to every movie I went to when I was a kid or movie or concerts or any of that stuff. So that's incredible. $300,000, Josh. Wow. And we've got breaking news, folks. Okay. This just in. People have way too much fucking money. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this just in also. The price of milk uh, is now more than the price of gas uh, in the state of Oregon. Dude. I think spending excess money on stuff that you don't need is, like, ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Like, spending $10 on a bottle of Crystal Pepsi from Canada to get that Canadian Crystal Pepsi going on, you rich son <laughs> Uh Last sports story of the show. Uh, Texas A&M, the football, uh, football version, Texas A&M, paid Appalachian State $1.25 million to play them. So one of their non-conference games, they said, hey, Appalachian State, why don't you come over here? Our athletic department will pay yours $1.25 million. Good teams kind of do that to fill out their, their schedule, right? Well, App State, Appalachian State took the $1.25 million from uh, Texas A&M, and then they beat Texas A&M. 
<laughs> we'll beat you and take your money. Isn't that hilarious? That is hilarious. One point two five million million to lose. They paid the they paid this school one point two five million dollars to kick their ass. Yeah, go back to our breaking news from a couple seconds ago. <laughs> Way too much money, and you, all you got out of it was getting your ass kicked. I just think uh, that's just precious. That is it's just like, great. It's like going to Vegas. Instead of going to Vegas, just hit, give somebody your money and tell them to kick you in the ass as hard as they can, and you can save a trip to Vegas by doing that. So. Dude, I could have saved a trip to Vegas back in the old days by just having two brownies. I wouldn't even have fucking known I was there. Just take my <laughs> wallet from me, give me two brownies, and I'll hit up the buffet, and I'm good. I'll just float around the casino for a while. Uh, Josh, we're going to get into our favorite favorite uh, section here, favorite topic of the night. We're going to Slash Tracks Wrestling. Let's do it. All right. 31 years ago yesterday, the movie, the classic, the, the legendary film, Suburban Commando, was released in theaters. Josh, did you see Hulk Hogan play a, uh, an outer space bounty hunter in 1991? Yes, I did, and I got to see The Undertaker as a kid. I was like, it's The Undertaker, uh, you know, when I watched it on video. Because that's I think that's how he met Hogan and got his gig with Vince was through that movie. Because he was working in WCW at the time as uh, mean Mark Callis. Yeah, he's uh, one of the skyscrapers, too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I love that movie, man. Christopher Lloyd was great. Hogan was fun. and Shelley uh, Duvall. Drinking the antifreeze, antifreeze. Um, but I, I heard about the movie by watching, I used to rent the Hulkamania tapes all the time. Yeah. And pay-per-views and stuff. And on one of the Hulkamania tapes, it shows him on the set of uh, Suburban Commando. Uh, so that that's how I found out about it. And uh, I actually think I saw that in theaters with my parents. Uh, poor, my poor parents had to sit through that. Uh, Mr. Nanny was good too. But yeah, Suburban Commando, man, I love... I love that movie. It's still fun to watch today. And uh, hearing The Undertaker talk at the end, and it's like a little kid's voice. Yeah. And Hogan's like, You're a dead man, Ramsey. <laughs> no wonder these guys never talk. Uh, I remember when Christopher Lloyd, like, shows up and, like, he gets his, like, somebody rips his door off or he gets his, almost gets his door ripped off. And he's like, You almost ripped my door off, Colonel. <laughs> like, I still quote that to this day. Like, 30 years later, I, that's the most random movie quote, I think, that I that I drop on people. People have no idea what I'm talking about. And it's... then the other quote from that film is where Hogan goes over to the guys who were working on the drag racer across the street. And they, like, were screwing with Christopher Lloyd the entire film. So Hulk Hogan's renting a room from Christopher Lloyd. So he goes over to, like, confront them. And he's like, you know what I'm going to do to you? And they're like... Or, or no, he Hogan goes across the street, and the guys are like, "You know what we're gonna do to you?" And Hogan's like, "You're gonna break my bones. You're gonna uh, beat the crap out of me." And it's like, "Nah, it's the '90s. We're gonna sue you." Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. I remember that one too. <laughs> do you remember this one from a different movie? Yeah. What's that smell? <laughs> Dookie. <laughs> Dookie. Itty bitty little wainers. <laughs> Battle of the, of the tough, tough guys. guys. God, that guy was Turn, supposed to. Turn that guy over. was supposed to be WCW. That was they were saying that was Ted Turner without saying it was Ted Turner because he was trying Fuller. to steal Hogan. Kurt Fuller, the character actor guy that was the bad guy, was supposed to be Ted Turner. It's probably he's another competing guy at a different network. He's he writing it. He didn't know what wrestling was. Like the guy blank didn't know. check. <laughs> of course, of course, Vince McMahon's going to make that care. Vince McMahon and Hogan rewrote No Holds Barred. Of course, the evil guy that's trying to steal Hogan doesn't know what wrestling is because I'm sure Vince didn't believe that Ted Turner knew what the hell pro wrestling was. Well, there's Read just between the lines. Ted Turner was a big wrestling fan. AOL reason it got taken out. He would have financed it forever. But that's a good segue to one of your other stories talking about somebody not appreciating wrestling, right? Yeah. Yeah, so Eric Bischoff recently uh, on his podcast, I think it's 87 Weeks, is that what it's called? 83 Weeks. 83 83 Weeks uh, with Conrad. uh, What, Conrad? uh, Thompson. Conrad Thompson. Yeah. Yeah, and Conrad Thompson, by the way, is got a nice little empire of podcasts built up on his on his network. He's got he's got Flair. He's got Bischoff. He's got Jim Ross. He's got yeah. He's doing great. Anyway, on. 
uh, Conrad Thompson and Bischoff's podcast this week. Bischoff admitted, I'm just not that big of a fan of wrestling matches. So Eric Bischoff has uh, came out with it. He said he's not a fan of actual wrestling matches. He says, I'm a big fan of the story and the way the show is architected, built, formulated, created. I'm a big fan of new ideas. So he's a big fan of the sizzle and not a big fan of the steak. I can go either way with that because, like, without Eric Bischoff, we would not have the Attitude Era in WWE. We would not have the wrestling wars that we had. So he did innovate, and maybe his love for the sizzle is what really helped, you know, get everything going. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna promote, you got you got to have a respect for the actual matches themselves because that's where the storytelling really happens. You can really tell a story and paint a picture with your match. But I'm not gonna harp on him too much because he's not a wrestling guy. He was a sales guy. He was an ideals guy. You know, and he worked his way up and got lucky, and he did really good. He almost put Vince McMahon out of business. You know. And uh, so I'm not taking anything away from him, but it, it was disappointing to hear that he doesn't uh, care for the matches. I'd don't, still love to interview the guy someday, a uh, big hero of mine. Don't let Jim Cornette hear this story because uh, I'm, on the, I'm kind of with Jim Cornette in the sense that like you, you build the storylines and you have all the sizzle and all the pop and circumstance and all these angles and all these things to get the two people into the ring to tell a story, uh, to have the match. To I get agree the with you. in the building, right? Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. sizzle is just a means to an end to get the match in the ring and to have some good pro wrestling and have a reason why, why they're wrestling. So yeah. I think one of the biggest problems nowadays is people, Vince Russo, Eric Bischoff, all these people have fallen in love with the sizzle and the buildup of matches and the storylines that... There's just so many. It's like Raw. Bef- like I don't. I haven't seen as many Raw episodes where Triple H has taken over uh, lately. But towards the end, where Vince was still running the show, you'd have a three-hour Raw episode, and you'd have about twenty-two minutes of actual wrestling. If yeah, you're he, lucky, if he you're wouldn't lucky. call it. He wouldn't even call it wrestling. Like that was his role. As soon as Triple H took over, he put out a tweet. Just one word: wrestling. And, uh, yeah, because yeah. Vince wouldn't even allow people to use the word wrestling. Um, Shawn Michaels is running NXT right now, and apparently they're both doing really good. But I just okay. wanted I wanted it for the record. Uh, Jim Jim Cornette is also a hero of mine. My too. Our skills go like I took a lot from him, like with my mic skills. Him and Roddy Piper, and I took a lot of my ring work I did from people like Ric Flair, Roddy Piper, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. Um, I would, love to, I would love to interview. Uh, I'm talking about like my heel character. I would take You're a putting lot of yourself stuff. up there with some legends. <laughs> no, 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 no. They were my inspiration. Okay. They were they, they were my inspiration for my okay. VIP character. Yeah, I took a little bit from Rick, a little bit from Brett, a little bit from Roddy Piper, a little bit from Cornette, um, a little bit from HBK. But uh, anyway, I, I I completely respect Jim Cornette. I agree with him that the Montreal screw job was a work. Yeah, I know you don't agree with that, um, but and I also agree with you and him that Bischoff is in the wrong here. Uh, I, Bischoff is still a hero of mine because he did a lot for the business, and even after WCW sold, whenever he was just talent for WWE and showed up as a general manager, he was mm-hmm. fucking huge. He was such a great heel manager, a general manager. It was like three years, you know. Yeah, he was really uh, over. He had great chemistry with Stephanie McMahon, believe it or I not. Was, yeah. Um. He. Yeah. Bischoff was great on screen. You know what? Bischoff They're just. To do. Bischoff. Before we move on to the next wrestling story, Bischoff is super talented. Um. He has an eye for the story and what is going to get over. Um. He single handedly, not that he came up with the idea for the NWO, but he kind of ripped it off from Japan because they had something very similar. But he did. He saw that, and and created a new thing with it in WCW and took the, the business to heights it's never been before or since. It's, wrestling has never been as popular as it was in 1996 or yeah. 1997. It just hasn't. 
And, you know, back then, both shows were pulling like a 5.9 and shit. And now the yeah. show oh, is pulling like a 1.8, 1. 1.9. It's, they lost know, millions. Everybody, so everybody on Nitro, for the most part, and everybody on Raw, at some point, could have main evented a pay-per-view. It's like everybody was so popular. I mean, yeah. I'm talking, like, the Godfather would come out and get a Road Warrior pop. Yeah. It, like, it's, I don't know, it's just LaParca. People it, popped him like he was the Ultimate Warrior when LaParca yeah. came out with a chair. Dude, like, just what? <laughs> you know, it was just a different time, and I I hope wrestling can even get back to halfway as popular as it was because if it does, it just makes it so much more fun for the fans of the business. And a lot of people don't know this, but Eric Bischoff is not the one responsible for WCW's downfall. Mm -hmm. He had he did all that. Yeah, the NWO was getting stale. Yes, but around the time that they were really really kicking ass. Uh, Turner Broadcasting, the censors and stuff, told them to tone the show down to have a, something opposite of what the Attitude Era was, the raunchy shit. Yeah. And it's like, we want you to keep bring, getting these ratings you're getting, but we need you to make it more kid-friendly. And they really tied his hands because he had a product that was working, and you know they dumbed it down. They got rid of him, and then you had shit where Kevin Nash is booking himself to beat Goldberg, and you know, the rest is history. You've heard it a million times. But the, uh, yeah. the Time Warner merge was basically what killed WCW because they didn't want when they when Time Warner was taking over and they merged with TNT and Turner Broadcast and all that stuff. Basically, they were looking at the books and they were like, shit, WCW has all these guaranteed money contracts and they're doing really, really bad. They're hemorrhaging money. They're like, yeah. this is a this is a losing product. We don't want it. Besides, and plus, they had a stigma against wrestling anyway. A lot of people didn't like wrestling. They thought it was for you know what losers or dirtbags or whatever. Not even seeing how popular it was the previous two or three years, but it was lose. It was hemorrhaging money, and when they took over, that was pretty much that was it. It didn't matter what Bischoff was going to do or wanted to do. It was it was a done deal. Not even Ted Turner could save it because it yeah. wasn't his. Deal to, he couldn't call the shots anymore. He, he would have paid for the rest of his life to keep the show on the air if it was his choice. And, you know, I still think Vince McMahon paid Vince Russo a shit ton of money and said, okay, after you do this and you kill WCW for me, we're going to have to play this out forever that I didn't hire you to do this. You're going to have to... I really believe that. I believe he was sent so, there to destroy Wait a minute. So you're telling me that Vince not only used hush money on his paralegals, but he also used hush money on <laughs> Vince Russo yes, for the I all think Vince so was an the time? Assassin. He was an assassin. Listen, Look bro. It. If I'm going to do this, bro. So Vince, hey, Vince Russo is a genius. Then he's still getting paid from WWE, and and he's got his podcast, and he went and got a big contract from WCW. That's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Good for him, man. <laughs> Anyways, uh, well, what's next? Okay, the next wrestling story. Uh, 26 years ago, last week, the WWF, speaking of WCW and <laughs> WCW and WWF, uh, Monday Night Wars, WWF debuted fake Diesel and fake Razor Ramon. So WCW at the time was just, you know, we'll take Kevin Nash, we'll take Bret Hart, we'll take Scott Hall, we'll take uh, X-Pac, we'll, we'll take everybody. We're taking we all the WWE talent. We don't want Isaac Yankum, though. Yeah, we're I don't, I don't want. I'm not calling him by his K name because he said some horrible shit. Um, but yeah, Isaac Yankum, uh, Jerry Lawler's evil, sadistic dentist, uh, Glenn Jacobs, became the fake Diesel. I don't remember who the fake Razor was. I, was I can't so remember. Cringy. It doesn't matter what his name was. Um, I it just, doesn't matter what your name is. <laughs> when I was a kid. And I saw that Fake Diesel and Fake Razor Ramon were making their debut. They were billing them. WWF was billing them as actually Razor Ramon and Scott Hall. And yeah. Eric Bischoff heard about this, that they were being advertised. So he calls Scott Hall and Kevin Nash into his office, okay? And he says, what is all this I hear about Razor Ramon and Kevin Nash or Diesel coming back to WWF? And this is ridiculous. You need to keep me in the loop. I just signed you guys. What, do you want more money? And then Scott Hall and Kevin Nash were like, yeah, sure, we'll take more money. <laughs> yeah, that's how they so got They got even more money. They got an even bigger contract from WWF 
uh, you know, firing back at WCW by, you know, introducing fake Diesel and fake Razor Ramon, which Scott Hall and Kevin Nash had no part of. They were locked into a contract with WCW. Eric Bischoff thought it was a work, thought mm-hmm. that they were leaving. They were going to get out of their contract, so he paid them even more money. Mm-hmm. So the only thing good that came out of that was Scott Hall and Kevin Nash got even bigger paydays. Guaranteed contracts. And from that day forward, all wrestlers pretty much got that. Before that, there's some people that only made like two, $300 a match, even on WWF. Uh, I just, well, I just remember being a kid and like, I was like 11 or 12 and I knew that this fake diesel and fake crazy Ramon was horseshit and it sucked. Yeah. I could like the red, it had very gobbly gooker. Like when the Turkey on Thanksgiving at the survivor series, you know, hatched out of the egg, it felt like that kind Undertaker of horseshit. Thought he was going to be the egg man. Yeah. He, <laughs> it, it, or the red rooster or, you know, mantar. It just, sometimes the WWF, when they missed they really missed. Yeah. Big time. Mantar you know what the, pops up on uh, Young Rock, Alex. Oh, uh, Mant- Mantar. Yeah. yeah, Young Rock is sitting in the locker room before his first match against the Brooklyn Brawler. And uh, who also happened to be that baseball player. Remember the Gabe baseball Knuckleball player? Schwartz. Yeah, that was, uh, that was the Brooklyn Brawler. Um, but he's in the locker room and stunning Steve, o- or uh, the ringmaster is there next to him, Stone Cold. And he's like, hey, kid, at least you're not that guy. And it looks over, and Mantar's in the a guy. In the, he's trying to get through the door, but his head's too big. Yeah. Uh, young Rock, was, check it out, folks. That was a crap gimmick. And also, Man Mountain Rock, Duke <laughs> the Dumpster Drowsy, the New Rockers, um, Techno Clown. Team, Techno Team 2000. There was just some shit back then. Doink was a good heel. But whenever he turned face and had dink and wink and all that, it just it got... wasn't it, it wasn't Matt Bourne at that yeah, point. Matt Matt Bourne, that's who it was. That's the one I wrestled in Texas. Yeah, and he like had like even more sadistic face paint on when I wrestled with him, almost like Heath Ledger's Joker mixed with uh, Doink the Clown, and he did the whole biting the ass thing like he does, like he did back then. Yeah, and I thought I thought he was just gonna act like it. He bit the shit out of my ass during that match. And we were in Odessa, Texas. And Doink the Clown, Matt Bourne, bit my ass. Uh, <laughs> hardcore. Whoever did he was, have his, pretty sure it was Matt. But yeah. How did he get a grip on your butt cheeks when he had his cast on? Do you remember when he wore that cast when he was oh, just God, waffling? Yeah. He had the Cowboy Bob Orton arm cast, just waffling <laughs> people with it. Um, last wrestling story of the show. And yeah. this is this is a... This is a gimmick and a storyline that did not miss for WWF. Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage formed the Mega Powers 35 years ago this week. The team would be together for over a year before they finally exploded at WrestleMania 5. They never needed to be a tag team. Like, he did not need Macho Man. Every time they did a tag match, Macho Man would end up, like, leaving the match for some reason, and Hogan would still win. I never understood. They would just, I remember the Twin Towers, specifically on Saturday Night's main event. A team oh, fell through the ropes. Did you see that clip? Where no. They... <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see that. But I remember from that Saturday Night's main event, like, Elizabeth fell down. Hogan takes her to the back. And, like, Macho Man sees that, he, that Hogan's taking Liz to the back. And then uh, Macho finishes off the Twin Towers by himself. Goes back to the locker room, confronts Hogan. Hogan's like trying to take care of Liz, you know. And then Hogan, Macho starts doing the, you have lust in your eyes for Liz, and you're you're after Liz, and <laughs> it, that whole thing was. I think, I think, I think. Yeah, like you're lusting for Liz, brother. You're the luster. You're not Hulkster. You're the luster. Yeah, Liz. Your you cream it. is rising to the top. <laughs> You're not dropping the big leg on her, brother. Uh, no, Mega Powers, one of the first real big angles I remember. The first being WrestleMania three. I remember the buildup between Andre and Hogan. But I remember WrestleMania five, the Mega Powers exploding, being huge because I was about six or seven years old. I had just got the Hasbro ring from J.C. Penney's and Macho Man and Hogan came with the ring. Um, had the WrestleMania five box. It was a really big deal. Um, even being a huge fan of both of them as a kid, I knew at the end of the day, 
there was no way Hogan was putting Macho Man over. I just didn't even see them on the same level, even though they kind of were. Yeah. What were your thoughts about that? Well, I, I just I, back then I was such a big Hogan mark as a kid. I ripped so many white T-shirts up. My mom got mad at me. I'd re- have wrestling matches with pillows and pillow buddies and stuff. That wrestling yeah, wrestling buddies. But yeah, man, I'm gonna try to put a clip here if I if I can get it in. If not, I'll at least put a link to the video in the description. During that match, Alex was talking about Big Boss Man and Akeem versus the Mega Powers. Big Boss Man and Akeem hit the ropes at the same time. And I think it's Akeem when he does, when they both hit the rope, he just falls backwards over the rope because they put the rope, made the rope go down too low. Yeah. And he like backflips. Big O Akeem backflips out of the rope. Uh, just falls out, and Big Boss Man kind of looks back as he's finishing his spot. Um, it's it's pretty funny. I'll put a I'll put a clip in the in the video or uh, in the description. Uh, One of yeah, the... I knew Hogan would win. I, I hoped he would win. That was um, speaking of the Twin Towers, you know, Akeem. Um, that was one of the stupidest gimmicks ever. Like, were... yeah, one of the most racist gimmicks ever. They're gonna have a white guy be the African. Dream. character yeah whatever akeem the african dream and he's doing all these hand jive movements and like you could never get that no. on tv today no they were making fun Wait. of uh, dusty had left the american dream so they were making fun of him like the way he talks and stuff it was like a jab at him kind of like virgil was a jab at him and then vincent was a jab at vince mcmahon uh if so- i was that when Akeem was the one man gang and he was like in a biker outfit with a mohawk and he was taking on like four or five jobbers at once, uh, that was the gimmick that they needed to keep for him. And they also should have just had the one man gang team up with the big boss man. Yeah. It would have made yeah. it would have made way more sense. That Akeem gimmick sucked. Um did you enjoy but, Big Boss Man versus the Mountie, the Nightstick match back in the day? Yeah, I, it's, I just recently rewatched that, and the Mountie steals the show. Like, when he's going to jail, and then he's in the jail cell, and the guy is talking about, don't you just love the, the feel of leather on your skin? Like, he, yeah, he's like, he's being hit on by a guy in the jail cell, and he's screaming, and he's just having a hell of a time. I thought that was, he, he cared, Jacques Rougeau carried that whole entire yes, angle. That was good, good shit. Um, let's get into some horn spooky news, man. All right. Nice. All right. All right, Josh. Uh, real quick hitter for uh, the first story of the horn spooky news. Nev Campbell, star of the Scream franchise, uh, turned 49 this week. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Nev. Yeah, happy yeah, birthday, we Nev. Just, we just uh, riffed the shit out of the movie you only spent like eight hours filming. Yeah, uh, Scream Three. That movie, Scream Three, that we riffed for the season premiere of Slash Tracks. Um, I know that we've joked around about it and stuff, but they really did a really bad job with the editing and the story. Um, they filmed all this stuff, planning to have two killers. Yep. And then they left in stuff that would like lead us to believe there was two killers. And then when they decided to make the change to one killer, all the stuff that they left in. And some of the dialogue they left in made no sense. And yeah, they can't the, explain it away. The killer was in jail and somehow made like four phone calls. Yeah, it's a mess. Know? It is absolutely and, a mess. And then when they, you can see, tell the scene where they killed uh, the actress playing that was going to play Sydney in Stab 3. When they kill her, you don't even see Ghostface. It, it's, her dead body's laying there and then she gets dragged off by somebody off camera. Like you yeah. could tell it was filmed just to kill, you know, because they hadn't they hadn't filmed her death scene because she was going to be the killer. So post production, they had to bring her back in and film a death scene. Yeah, so for like they one day. Cost- yeah, they yeah. didn't even put a costume on. They just drug her. You just see her getting drug off off with the whoever's dragging her off camera. It was bad. Uh, they really wanted. They had a lot of red herrings. Like, is it Dewey? Is it this guy? Is it the? Is it McDreamy, Detective McDreamy? <laughs> 
Is it Old Man Withers? Is it Josh LaRue? Is it Alex Vanova? Who did you keep calling Patrick Dempsey? I can't remember. McDreamy. No, you said a different actor. I, I didn't mean to call him Dylan McDermott or Dylan whatever. Mc... Yeah. Dylan McDermott was on another TV show, and I think he was in uh, Steel Magnolias. He was like Julia Roberts' husband in that Steel Magnolias American Horror Story, too. Yeah. Um, so here's another, here's another story. Uh, a 35-foot inflatable Michael Myers is on sale for $2,995 on eBay. I'll be right back. <laughs> I got to go buy something real quick. $3,000 for a 35-foot inflatable Michael Myers. Will they take Crystal Pepsi as payment? <laughs> Probably. Did you um, have to do the $10 a piece divided by 3000 I saw I mean, a sign in Oklahoma said Myers Tax Service, you know? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't want to get audited by that place, <laughs> you know? Myers wacky, Tax Service. <laughs> wacky, waveable, arm flailing Michael Myers tube man. God, man. Um that's you know if you t- if you like Halloween which we both do and and you're able to spend three thousand dollars on yard decorations more power to you man you're doing way better than we are. Um, Josh, the Munsters premiered on September twenty fourth, so I don't know like two or three weeks ago in nineteen sixty four. So forty eight years ago the Munsters premiered. And now um, one's out. Yeah. Yeah. So the Munsters. Uh, you know, the Munsters was only on for two two seasons yeah. back in the 60s. Um, they had some TV movies. They had some reunion movies. I think they even tried to revive the show in the 70s. Yeah. Um, I really, really, really like the original Munsters. I like the reunion movies. I like pretty much anything original Munsters. I tried to watch the new Rob Zombie Munsters movie on Netflix. I made it 16 minutes in. The tone is weird. Uh, he it's took like the store. I, it's a pre-equal, but it's um, Herman is like trying to be in showbiz. Uh, Lily's like trying to meet guys on dating apps. Uh, it's just the tone. Uh, the jokes fall flat. Herman's behavior and demeanor is not at all like he was on the show. He's kind of goofy, but what made Herman so uh, such a popular character to me was he was just a good father. He was a he was Frankenstein, but he didn't know he was Frankenstein. Yeah, um, that's monster. Yeah, he was just trying to be a good dad, and he was goofy and kind of dim witted. But he w- had a really pure heart, and I I don't know what I, maybe I didn't give Rob Zombie's film enough of a chance, but it was it was cringy to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it. Maybe he wanted it to be cringy and tongue in cheek. I don't know. Uh, Richard Breaker. Yeah, uh, he's the mad scientist, uh, Doctor Frankenstein, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm curious to see how he does because he's—I think he's a good actor. But uh, I always figured Rob Zombie was a huge Munsters fan. I mean, he had a song called Dragula. You know, it's the name of their car, which is so. fi- which is fine. Rob, but Rob Zombie has a very specific way of doing things and putting his wife and everything. <laughs> well, it's fine. Whatever. Kevin Smith puts all of his friends and family and movies i mean if you're that successful and you can do it that's adam sandler all those guys if you can do like if i was making movies you'd be in all my movies um which is fine but i don't know uh he he swung and missed as far as i'm concerned um so do i slash tracks action news do i recommend it no josh is gonna watch it he'll let you know what he thinks about it in the next episode how about that yeah, and I'm excited to see Hellraiser, the TV series. I thought the trailer looked wicked, and uh, it might be a female uh, pinhead, but I thought she looked crazy, like yeah. crazy good, and the plot seems like it's going to be pretty cool. Like, It's kind of like that uh, new movie called Hide or Die, or whatever it's called, mm-hmm. and it's like uh, you got to pass it on to survive. It seems like that's what they're doing with this. You have to pass the box on to live, so oh, I'm, like- I'm going to check it out. So it's like the ring. You got to make a copy of the tape and have someone else watch it, or you die. It's the same exact it idea. That's, that's what it seemed like. You know, you okay. pass the limit configuration on or something. I'm gonna check it out. But yeah, so it's like uh, the movie It Follows, where uh, you have you have sex with somebody and they get the curse, uh, like huh. the worst STD of all time. You have death following you the entire. Anyway, um, you piss out a limit configuration. Oh god! Oh my god! The puzzle box right through my dick. <laughs> um, 
And I'll bring you pain and pleasure from STIs you've never seen before. STDs. Um, STIs. That'll, that'll put us in... Uh, we just got demonetized again. Yeah, uh, too bad. Yeah, they're going to take... So they're going to deduct... Since we're demonetized, they're going to take zero dollars from our zero dollar balance. Um, since we're talking about uh, the female pinhead, you know, kind of causing a stir in the spooky uh, universe... Uh, the new Scooby-Doo movie. This isn't even on my notes. I just saw it. So the new Scooby-Doo cartoon movie, Velma Dinkley, has officially been confirmed to be LGBTQK. <laughs> I butchered that. To be, lesbian. you know, a lesbian. So uh, that's big news for Scooby-Doo. Scooby -Doo. Scooby -Doo. We already knew. Jinkies. I don't care either way. I still love uh, Scooby-Doo. It doesn't change anything. It's like great. It's like it's about time. And there's an adult Scooby-Doo movie or TV show coming out soon with, like, decapitated heads, blood. Uh, yeah, like Daphne, yeah, yeah. Daphne, so. And the, the chick from The Office is doing that one. We, I think we talked about that on a previous episode. Uh, but I was going to say real quick, yeah, there is an adult uh, version of Scooby-Doo. It's available on Brazzers and Vivid. Uh, Vivid Video. So, adult Adult videos have been making versions of Scooby Doo for years now, Josh. Oh, not 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 like a porno, Alex. But oh. I was, it's curious to huh? know that you knew all that. What? Uh, it's going to huh? be on HBO. It's just going to be like a more mature. Oh, okay. Of them. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> not all a right. Misty Monday movie. All right. And uh, last spooky story of the episode, Josh. Uh, now this is not really horror themed, but it is kind of spooky. This is true life. This is like a true life deal. So the Dahmer show on Netflix, the Jeffrey Dahmer show about the, the cannibal killer from Wisconsin. It looks creepy. Yeah, he it's super popular on Netflix. I've I've tried to watch it. Um, there's two ep I've watched the first two of ten episodes. It's okay. Uh, I can see how it's popular, but it I don't so know. So many of them though. There's so many yeah. Dahmer and stuff. The yeah. first the first thought I had when the Dahmer thing came out on Netflix was like the first thing I tweeted, and you can look at my Twitter. Uh, at Van Dollar Fifteen, if you want to go back and fact check me, I'm like, we really need another Dahmer thing. I mean, we've literally had movies, docu series, true crime podcast, uh, everything. I mean, yeah. there's so many Jeffrey Dahmer things that have been released. Like, my opinion on serial killers is like, we need to respect the victims and their families, and we also need to just let these bastards become uh like a distant distant memory we need to almost erase these fuckers from existence because yes. all it does is oh it's like some other some other horrifying yeah some other weirdo's gonna see it and be like oh i could you know maybe eventually be popular and have shows could be made about me it's like no we need to just erase these guys uh, exactly. we don't need to we don't need to celebrate these guys so anyway some guy taylor james who runs the cult collectibles out of vancouver canada said he's willing to part with Jeffrey Dahmer's prison glasses for $150,000. And Dahmer was, of course, convicted of 16 murders that we know of. So, and he didn't just, he didn't just uh, kill these men. Um, he also ate them. So, yeah, he had a weird thing, Josh, where people, he didn't want people to leave him. He, could, he was a homosexual. He couldn't find a boy. He, like, he couldn't... It was the early 90s, so it was harder to be out uh, and be who he was. And he just had this thing where... He'd go and pick up men, but they'd leave after, like, a one-night stand, and he wanted them to, like, actually stay, and his way of keeping them was to kill them and yeah. to ingest their, like, he described that he would eat them because he, it was, they could never leave him at that point or something. I don't know. They um, part of him forever. Yeah, so, uh, what do you... What do you think? You think that this Dahmer popularity and this guy trying to make $150,000 off this dirt bag... Is good or bad? What What are your thoughts? I think that's just as disgusting as somebody like trying to sell Nazi shit to a museum or something like yeah. that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's it's listen, that's terrible. And also, since we're on the topic topic of that, before we get into headlines, the Nazi thing. Uh, when people like when people post stuff about that or they say something. And they try to put it in a positive light. It's like, I immediately, I'm like, okay, you're an idiot. Like, you are an idiot. I don't want to hear anything from your mouth. Like, yeah, there's, there's a certain group of people right now that are, like, glorifying a lot of the Nazi stuff. And it's scary. And it's disgusting. It's disgusting. disgusting. 
um, racism at its highest, highest form. And when people say that the Holocaust didn't happen or when people say that, um, you know, Sandy Hook didn't happen or all these terrible tragedies didn't happen, you are an idiot. You I are. Don't wanna, I don't want to hear your mouth. I don't want to see you say these stupid, uninformed, and unintelligent garbage that you have. Brainwashed uh, cattle. Brainwashed yeah. cattle. Had enough of this crap. Uh, yes. Let's get into some. Let's get into some headlines. I need I to watch my. Head, I don't have any head lice, but we can talk about it if you. All want. right, all right. There's another. There's your second dad joke from Josh. If you have your bingo scorecard out. Uh, headlines, Josh. It's official. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Mexican pizza is back at Taco Bell, and it is here to stay. So it's it not is. just a temporary deal. It is officially back. And it's better this time, right? Like, they brought it back and did it different? Like more. I like had it. Dude, I had it this weekend. Uh, it was delicious. They actually cut it for me this time. The last time I had a Mexican pizza, they didn't cut it. I had to cut it myself. Um, it was like that episode of Breaking Bad where the pizza wasn't cut at the party. Uh, <laughs> so I had to cut a fun fact, real quick, and I'll shut the hell up. The reason the pizza wasn't cut at the party and the whole reason that scene was in Breaking Bad is because a couple, a few episodes earlier, when Walt threw the pizza on top of the roof, yeah. a lot of viewers noticed that the pizza wasn't cut. It was just a round pizza that hadn't been oh, cut. God. And they're like, and they went to the internet like, they, well, the pizza wasn't cut. They didn't even try to make it look like a delivery pizza. So they added the scene that you're talking about at Jesse's party where they all talk about this local pizza chain that doesn't cut the pizza so yeah. they pass the savings on. That was all just to get the internet people to shut the hell up about the pizza not being cut. Well, maybe Taco Bell was trying to pass the savings on to me by not cutting it. And they like this Mexican pizza, Josh, the box was sturdier. It had cheese on this bastard. The tomatoes were on there in all of its glory. It was a really, really good Mexican pizza. Best Mexican pizza I've had in 15 years, dude. I heard that the last time they released it, a few months ago... They blew it. It, blew did, it. Not, it did not taste like the original whatever, but this time they brought it back, and it's supposed to be just like the, it was back in the day. Yeah, it was uh -huh. really, really good. The only thing that I wish they'd bring back on this bastard is, in the 80s, uh, they had olives and green onions on them as well, uh -huh. but... They don't have that anymore. But you know what? I'll take the mid-90s Taco Taco Bell Mexican pizza. No so it's back. I'm stoked about it. If you guys didn't know about it, if you if you didn't know, you better ask somebody, dog, because the Mexican pizza is back, son. So, yeah, go to Taco Bell. Get yourself a Mexican pizza. Uh, Josh, there's a new trend on uh, online right now, and it's pretty dangerous. So this is kind of in the Tide Pod uh, genre of oh, trends. God. Oh, God. Have you heard of Sleepy Chicken? Yes. Okay. Kids are kids and college age kids. People are cooking chicken in full bottles of NyQuil and then eating it and then filming what happens after they make this sleepy chicken. The problem is, Josh, is not the problem isn't just eating the sleepy chicken. It's actually the cooking process because when they cook it, the fumes from the NyQuil changes the properties of the medicine and it concentrates it to like even more like higher doses so the fda is like listen eating it's a uh, concern first of all because you're not supposed to eat something cooked in a full bottle of nyquil oh but the fumes is changing the chemical makeup of the nyquil and that is going to fuck you up too so i don't know if you can die from this but i, I would think it's not good because when i take one nyquil i'm knocked out dude who Figured this out, you know, like, okay, whippets aren't working, Tide Pods are kind of passe, bath salts made me eat my neighbor's face off. What if I take chicken and just cook that fucker in NyQuil? <laughs> That'll do it. It's a thing, man. It's like a thing. Um, I believe you. I, I've seen the stories. It's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. There's another story. This isn't in the rundown, but I just saw it the other day. Uh, there's a thing going around where, and this is kind of sports related. Uh, there was this guy who like, he was in a fishing contest and in order to win the fishing con, the local fishing contest, he was stuffing the fish he was catching with rocks and other parts of fish. 
Wow. So people are just doing stupid shit all over the place right now. Yes. Like yes. the headlines is popping off, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So sleepy chicken fishing competitors are stuffing their their catches with other fish's body parts and rocks. They actually got caught. Uh, they got caught at the fishing contest, and they're in hot water, Josh. So maybe they had some sleepy chicken before they got in the boat, and they weren't thinking straight. And my dad took me to a fishing tournament when I was a kid, Alex, and I saw the stack of prizes. <clears throat> and one of the prizes was the original Power Rangers Megazord, the Dino Megazord. You got to win that fishing contest then. Yeah, but we didn't, out here until we, win. we didn't win. I was so disappointed. And then when we were done, they were handing out prizes to people. And they took that box down, and it was just an empty box anyways. It had... Um, like a, a couple reels inside of it. They oh. just used the box to put the reels in yeah. and they pulled it out and it was like fishing reels. I would have been so disappointed if I had won that and yeah. it was just a couple fishing reels. You're the very first person to ever be catfished on the planet Earth, dude, but it was it, with the Megazord. Yeah, contest. You um, got fuck. My, my brother and dad, when I was growing up, um, never wanted to take me fishing because we'd go fishing, but the, before we went out fishing... We'd go to the store and get some corn dogs and some potato skins and some soda pops. I'd eat all my snacks on the way to the lake. And by the time the boat was in the water, I wanted to go home. Yeah, I want to yeah. go home. I want to play video games. I want to see my mom. The only reason I wanted to go was to get the snacks. So I don't want a four-hour commitment to get these goddamn mojos and chicken strips and corn dogs. But I, it, it was so like such a probably a pain in the ass for them to have me bitching the entire time uh i was not a big fisherman i just wasn't interested in it uh i would have rather had some sleepy chicken i think in the boat just pass the fuck out uh while they were out there fishing i had a friend that i quit fishing with in our 20s because i he wouldn't touch worms i had to like bait his hook and i'm like dude you're like 25 years old a worm is not gonna oh my god like that <laughs> that was the last time um Anyways, go ahead. All right, next next headline for the show. NASA has has discovered a nearby Earth-like exoplanet using the James Webb telescope. The so hey, potential another place to live, Josh. Uh, we've discovered another Earth-like exoplanet. Sounds pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah. One What's big the problem. Downside? One big problem. <laughs> it it currently rains lava every night. Yeah. <laughs> Bowser lives there. That's the final. <laughs> that's the final planet in uh, Super Mario Galaxy Three coming to the Nintendo Switch. Dude, uh, it's like man, this place is beautiful. Too bad it's fucking raining lava right now. Oh, there goes the arm. <laughs> lava. Singing wow. in the rain, just singing in the flow. <laughs> yeah, they're like, man, could really go for some rain right now. That wasn't lava. Uh, so a hey, uh, Hollywood is doing a biopic. On the hit duo from the early 90s, Millie Vanilli, Josh. So, yeah, there's going to be a biopic. So that means the people playing Millie Vanilli, Fab and Rob, they're going to be lip singing, uh, pretending to be Millie Vanilli, who were also lip singing to people in real life. So lip singing uh, on top of lip singing on top of lip singing. What are your they thoughts, Josh? They were in an episode of uh, the cartoon Super Mar Adventures in Super Mario Brothers 3. Uh, uh, Wendy Koopa, Cootie Pie Koopa, the girl Koopa kid, mm -hmm. demanded that they sing for her birthday. Millie Vanilli was in the episode singing. Um, or maybe they weren't singing. I don't know. Um, I think it's a waste of time. A documentary would be funner. Just, you know. But I'll tell you the one I'm really looking forward to, man. The biopic I'm looking forward to is weird, the Al Yankovic story, because it's it's got Daniel Radcliffe pay, playing Weird Al. Uh, Weird Al picked him, wanted him. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe took accordion lessons from Weird Al and actually learned how to play the songs on the accordion from Weird Al. And the movie is a parody of biopics, mm -hmm. that, but it does have some truth to it. But it is so Weird Al. You've got to see the trailer for it. If you I haven't did. seen it... I did, yeah. Okay. It's it's not really it's it's all it's bullshit. It's a farce. Some of it's some of it's true, but it's kind of it's kind of like somewhere between Walk Hard 
and Walking Tall. You know, somewhere between those two, but it's such a weird owl thing. It's like a parody of biopics, and it looks like it's going to be fucking great. Uh, so, big Weird Al fan, uh, just in general. Such a genuine dude. But, uh, uh, Nilly, two, Nilly, not so much. <laughs> two, two quick thoughts about Weird Al. First concert I ever went to live was Weird Al. Uh, he was on the Amish Paradise Tour in 1996. Uh, went to a Weird Al concert probably like six years ago. Uh, got shit on by a goose. It was an outdoor concert. <laughs> And the towel that I was going to sit on for the concert, because it was outdoors, uh, I ended up having to wipe the goose shit off me. And there was a little girl, like probably four years old at the time. She comes up to me after I wipe my neck off, and she pokes me on the shoulder, and she says, Mister, Mister, you still got a whole bunch of goose shit all over your neck. <laughs> I'd never been more... I would, Dude, I was so embarrassed. Um, yeah, but looking back, it's super funny. I remember when I got shit on by the goose, though. Goose Geese must just only eat grass, because it felt like someone took like a, a <laughs> took a clump of grass and just slammed me in the shoulder with grass, because it was like, thump! You should share that story with Al on Twitter. Tag him and tell him. I think he would, he would probably reply to that. I have um, the picture of it. I have the picture of me going... And then you can see the goose shit on my shoulder, stained through my shoulder. I think he would actually probably reply to that or say yeah. something about it. We better get uh, hey, we better get Al on the show to talk about that. Oh, think? that would be amazing. That would be fucking amazing. Yeah, <laughs> look out for that slash of Holics Weird Al coming soon. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, and one real quick thing about Millie Vanilli, when they were performing, and then the tape started to skip, and then the yeah. jig was up. They were probably that was probably more anxiety causing than me having a buzzer beater uh, and heading home and almost shitting my pants. <laughs> like those are the two. And also, if you go to your friend's house and the water starts coming back up because you plug the toilet and you can't find a plunger anywhere, those are the three moments in your life where you'll be the most anxiety filled. To toilet overflowing, uh, almost shitting your pants. And making it to the toilet without crapping down your legs, and Milli Vanilli getting caught lip singing after they just won a fucking Grammy. Uh, <laughs> those are the mo three moments. Uh, uh, before, before we do a funny thing, I wanted to tell you uh, Brendan Fraser has done a couple movies, and peop they they watched this movie coming out called The Well. It's like a drama he did. He's really upset about Batgirl not getting released, by the I way. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, but anyways, he gets a standing ovation at this screening of this new movie he's got coming out soon, this drama. And he's, like, in tears. Uh, he faced a lot of, like, inner demons and shit over the past decade uh, when he's been kind of away from the screen. He's put on a lot of weight, but he's losing it. And he didn't know how much people cared about him, you know. And uh, The Rock even came out and said, you know, if it wasn't for you... Uh, I wouldn't even have a movie career, probably. The Mummy, yeah. The yeah. Mummy Returns, or I can't remember. Scorpion King is where he made his yeah. debut. In the Mummy Returns, he was the Scorpion King. It was really bad CGI, but it was him. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to throw that out there, rooting for Brendan Fraser. I'm happy mm -hmm. to have him back, and I can't wait to see what he's done. Um, the, Rock's, the Rock's one line in that movie was, Akun Machinte. <laughs> Akun Machete! Horrible CGI whenever he was like uh, the scorpion, half scorpion, half human. Man scorpion. Um, that was, yeah. so, that, dude, that was early 2000s CGI. Like when um, an, the other CGI that comes to mind was Van Helsing. With, oh, I, I went and saw that in theaters. I regret it. Yeah, the CGI know. was pretty awful. Um, a movie that didn't really have bad CGI, and this is a story that's not on the rundown. I just immediately thought about it. Constantine is getting a sequel, finally. The Keanu Reeves movie, Constantine. The original director's coming back. Keanu Reeves is coming back to play Constantine. I don't know if Shia LaBeouf is going to come back. Um, he's kind of in and out of the Hollywood <laughs> gig. Uh, he always does something that gets him on the outs, and then he kind of makes a comeback. But anyway... Constantine, the sequel is going to come out. I'm looking forward to that, and the CGI in that film was actually really good. So I yeah. love Constantine the movie, and I yeah. also enjoy the TV show. And the guy from the TV show joined the cast of Legends of Tomorrow as Constantine and did a crossover with other DC characters. 
I, if they if they're doing a sequel cool. to the original, I would love to see uh, a little more lore from the actual comics because there's a lot of cool stuff there, and maybe even like a multiverse situation, uh, you know, where the other Constantine could show up because he's he's I, I don't know his name, but he plays the character like comic wise really good like comic book wise. Yeah, and since we're in the multiverse, you're going there. Uh, let's just bring Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in, they, Spider-Man. And then Spider-Pig can also be in it. And, uh, yeah, Josh, probably not going to happen. Probably not a multiverse uh, Constantine situation, but I'm pulling for you, pal. You know what else I'm pulling for? The last story of the show. All uh, right, what do you got? I told this to you off, off screen, and you kind of you kind of called bullshit on it you said well if it's true like if it yeah, happens if it's true if it's true so someone found a bottle of mountain dew from 1992 and on under the cap was the super nintendo you win a super nintendo now i'm gonna have to say allegedly now because josh poo-pooed all over it i tell you I'm, what i'm gonna check with <laughs> our with our uh we have an analyst for these stories yeah his name is uh walter snopes mm-hmm uh, or, or it's actually Walter Willie well, White well, Snopes, WWW Snopes. Let me at least uh, tell the story real quick. Yeah, so yeah. Before, you, before you fucking fact check the story, can I tell the story? Yes, tell the story. All right, so apparently the guy finds the Mountain Dew cap, says free Super Nintendo underneath it. Uh, he like tweeted about it or sent it into Super Nintendo and Mountain Dew. They honored it, sent him a Super Nintendo with games and a Wii and a bunch of merchandise. If it's true... Pretty cool, and I, I saw the picture. Bottle was beat to shit, but it did have the you know the free Super Nintendo on the cap. Yeah. Pretty cool. That, that is amazing. If it, if it really happened, that's freaking amazing. Um, it look from everything I see, it looks like it's true. Legit. Yeah, I mean, you know, this could this could happen for like people that played McDonald's Monopoly games over the years. Except there's a documentary where you find out this family. Yeah. Was like stealing all the big prizes. Yeah, like, they, so there was like a, the guy who was in charge of like moving the pieces from like the bank vault to like wherever was like giving the pieces out to his family members and friends and stuff and taking parts of the, the prize money. Um, That's real, awesome, though. That's really cool. That's a cool story, man, about the, uh, the Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they brought him one like in a box, or if they just gave him like the mini Super Nintendo that they put out know. a couple years ago. I don't know. But the fact that they gave him a Wii. Oh wait, no, because this happened back when the Wii came out. This was like two thousand seven, two thousand eight. I'm gonna assume they gave him like an actual Super Nintendo, yeah, probably still in the box have to back then. And they so. probably, they pro. I'm sure at Nintendo they probably had some back stock. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So I that's mean, really fucking cool. You know, realistically. Um, also, real quick before before we end the show, uh, when I was a kid, I had a good friend, and his first cousin had, got a Pepsi cap, and they were having the NBA Finals, you know, Pepsi cap thing. So if you yeah. you get the cap, and it says a certain team and a certain number of games, you're gonna win like a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So back then. Most of the caps were shitters. So you'd get like Clippers win the finals in six. Uh, Grizzlies win the finals in whatever. All the crappy teams. You get all those. His cousin got a Chicago Bulls wins the finals in four. Okay? So the Bulls were the best. They had Jordan, Pip, and Rodman. They won 72 games that season. They're playing the Supersonics. So if they sweep the Supersonics, this dude's getting $100,000 or whatever the prize was. The Bulls ended up winning in six. But there was a point, like, I think they were up 3-0, where he's one win away from winning this huge prize because he got an actual decent Pepsi, you know, yeah. tab or whatever. But I remember in live time seeing the tab, knowing he had the cap, like, he's counting the money. He's already figuring out what he's going to do with it. He's going to buy some nuclear weed from his dealer. He's going to make some sleepy chicken. He's going to take some of those THC taps you took by accident. He's getting an adult Happy Meal. Uh, he's going to go fight a fucking too. nuclear grizzly. He's got all these things going on. Uh, but guess what? They they won in six. So he didn't win the money. Uh, and he didn't have a chance. So whatever. Josh, that's the end of the show, dude. Got anything to say before we, before we wrap this sucker up? Um, be sure to, if you enjoy what we do here, enjoy the books and the shows and everything, go to the Patreon. 
links right there on the screen and in the description. We also have a PayPal QR code if you just want to make a tip to the show. Uh, uh, you can go to the community tab on the channel and find the QR code there. Um, yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, be sure to check out the season premiere of Slash Tracks, Scream 3. It's up on the channel. And I just released uh, the prologue, Chapter 1 and 2, of Ash vs. Freddy. Freddy vs. Ash, sorry, a fan novel. Uh, not to be mistaken with Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash. It's just Freddy and Ash. Um, I think that's about it. Just please be excellent to each other. It's what the world needs right now with all the craziness. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dog. <laughs>